thank you all for uh, attending on behalf of the American Security Project. Uh, just a little bit about ASP. Uh, it's a nonpartisan organization created to educate the American public and the world about the changing nature of security in the 21st century. Our founders included uh, now Secretary of State uh, Kerry and Secretary of Defense uh, Hagel. So we've got a pretty good lineage of people with uh, competency and experience in security. Protecting the homeland does not start with the shores of New Jersey and New York and uh, Maryland and the East Coast or the West Coast. Protecting the homeland and protecting the United States and its national security starts literally thousands of miles away. Um, cooperation uh, between uh, the United States and Egypt on uh, counterintelligence, um, on uh, counterterrorism uh, and intelligence sharing, uh, I think it is. it has proven to be very useful and very uh, productive uh, for the U.S. over the years. We've seen it. Uh, when 9-11 took place, and we've seen it before and after that. And that is uh, a national security uh, issue that it is, I believe, important, uh, at least to the five administrations that I work with. And the third one is the military-to-military -military relationship. This is uh, proven to be a very vital and useful relationship. We in the U.S. certainly uh, enjoy uh, some privileges out of this relationship. What does Egypt need? What does the economy need? What do those who are looking for work in Egypt need? Egypt does need uh, the United States. And uh, I think for a variety of reasons that I have mentioned, when you, when you go to Egypt now, perhaps the public sentiment, when you meet ordinary people, they will say, oh, hell with America. We can't stand America. They brought the Muslim Brotherhood. And they will give you a long list of things that uh, they believe that the administration is responsible for. But when you actually talk with decision makers, policy people, people who are really seasoned, either in the military or politics or in the government, uh, they do appreciate the uh, relationship between Egypt and the United States. And by the way, this is not only limited to the either sort of like non-Islamist government. First, uh, there needs to be a comprehensive economic policy. Second, there needs to be a reform of the bureaucracy and an urgent need for the wheels of the government to start working again. Third, we need to have a public-private sector dialogue. Fourth, we need international best practice instituted again and uh, the path that Egypt was at one time taking, uh, coming back again. Fifth, we need the enabling environment of a government-to-government -government dialogue, certainly between the United States and Egypt on economic issues. So I would, I would like to see the, the security plan, the security operation to stabilize Egypt so that Egyptians continue to invest in Egypt and other countries feel comfortable enough to invest in Egypt. And I think that will address not just the infrastructure, but it will address all of Egypt's long-term economic requirements. But my sense has been that the, that the, the U.S. has, as, as espoused by President Obama and by others, has tried to follow a, a very simple policy that says African challenges are best met by African solutions. Private or public sector companies will grow exponentially. Very, very quickly. This has been the mo this is what has happened in China. This is what has happened in Brazil. This is what has happened in Turkey. Um, this is what has happened here in the United States in the early 1900s and shortly after the Great Recession. I mean, if you go back a hundred years, you would have heard of you know the Chase family and the Morgan family and uh, the Rockefellers, and you'll actually find that there were ten families, and the tap had turned on, and under the tap is a bucket. Now, the trickle-down economics require that bucket to be filled to the top and then the water to start overflowing. This is how I describe, unfortunately, what's happened, is that as that bucket is being filled in Egypt, we have somehow managed to turn off the tap before that water starts to overflow. What we need to ensure happens this time around is that that tap is not turned off. Egypt is the most populous and traditionally one of the most influential countries in the Middle East. The United States has had a long-term military, cultural, and economic
connection with that country, particularly that our military has built over those years, continues to hold us in good stead as we go through rough times. In addition to the relationship with the U.S., Egypt merits the attention and concern of all nations due to its natural position as a leader in the Middle East and Africa, its counterterrorism efforts, the importance of securing its borders, the Suez Canal, and other key positions on both the Red Sea and the Mediterranean.